From his thoughts on Patrick Beverly to him not getting a contract extension with the Nets, Kyrie Irving has been in the news lately. And, well, I guess he's got something to look forward to whenever there's a matchup between the Nets and the Lakers, because lately, it's all love and friendship between Kyrie and Patrick. Let's talk about the recent matchup between the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers, for example. I mean, it's already a pretty appealing deal on paper, isn't it? Well, sorry to disappoint, but that's not how it rolled out on the hardwood. Yup, Kevin Durant, Ben Simmons, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis weren't even a part of the contest. So what happened? Our man Irving was actually the sole star on the court, and the Lakers guard was his matchup. Even though Patrick managed to hold Irving off quite a bit, he still managed to finish Brooklyn's win with a game-high 26 points. The whole time, you could see him shadowing Irving on the defensive end. I guess his defensive tendencies are exactly what the Nets super guard wanted. Still, isn't it crazy that Kyrie only managed two field goals? On the other hand, this competition had Irving singing praises for his shadow. Apparently, other people may term this kind of behavior from Patrick to be irritating, but the 30-year-old found it to be fantastic. He loved how the Lakers guard brought out his competitive spirit, just as he brings out of other people. Kyrie's excitement from scoring against Patrick was so great that he even said that it made him feel like he could now score against the majority of people in the league. That's the respect I have for him, he said. So, if Irving is a fan of Patrick, what does the Lakers guard have to say about our guy? I think some other guys would probably use that word, but for me, I, I think with, with Patrick, uh, I enjoy the competitive spirit that he brings out of me um, and he brings out of other people. And, um, you know, if you can get by him and you can score on him, then I feel like you can score on a majority of the people in the league. Actually, Beverly says that he accepts the challenge of guarding the Nets' best backcourt player. In an interview with the Daily News, he responded to Irving's comments post-game. In a long gush of compliments, the Lakers' guard sang endless praises for the Mavericks' point guard. He called Kyrie the ultimate competitor and master of his craft, the master at that position to ever play. Patrick was practically booming. He admitted that it hadn't been easy playing against Irving. Are they willing to get back on defense? Are they willing to do the small things? Are they, I don't. I didn't think so with the unit they had last year. And there's no discredit to anyone, you know. Uh, you know, but as a basketball player, as you know. I feel like I have, I don't know, top 10, top 11 mind in the NBA when it comes to IQ and basketball. And it had always been that way. Whenever he plays against Kyrie, he makes sure to get a good night's rest the day before. I'd say that's a smart choice indeed. The man is certainly a force to be reckoned with, but this bromance is about to get even cuter. Right after the final buzzer, the two players shared a long exchange. They respect each other so much that even though they only see the other twice a season or so, they pencil those contests on their calendars. Guys, this is how you rise to be a defender and shot maker of their caliber. So, where does this bond between them come from? It's actually a result of their similar upbringing on the basketball hardwood. That's right, the two players have a lot in common. Obviously, you know, when it comes to structure or when it comes to, uh, uh, you guys like to use the word culture or whatever that, you know, when it comes to that, obviously you can, you know, hint me and, and, and you know, and throw a tight on it, but I just, I just like to win. You know, I just like, I, I pride myself on never, ever missing. Irving mentioned that when they play against each other, it's bound to look like a lot of back and forth is happening. But apparently, from where they're from, growing up in the trenches, this is nothing new. Irving said that he welcomes this challenge, and so he keeps telling Pat that the objective of the game is to win. His energy isn't at going back and forth against Pat, or trying to score over him every single time. Instead, he's just trying to play the game. So, whenever Kyrie misses a shot and Patrick says something about it, he just tells his friend that his objective is to win. If that's not sportsmanship, folks, I don't really know what is. Of course, this is bigger than just a personal competition for the two. It's about winning the game. You see, the big guys don't get stuck with the nitty gritty. That's why their friendship is so pure. But if Kyrie is so good, why are we hearing this concerning chatter lately? It seems like the Nets are not in any rush to give their star shooter a contract extension. Uh, I think just our approach, um, you know, we were going to make mistakes anyway tonight. Uh, so the first game, I just wanted to make sure, and I think my teammates wanted to make sure, the coach staff wanted to make sure that just we didn't feel any pressure. 
Uh, and, and I think the, the most important thing. That's right. Even though Kyrie has been trying for an extension since the summer, it's been going nowhere. In fact, his representative is trying to talk about a contract extension with the Nets once more. It's not looking great, folks. The Nets are in no rush to help out our guy. The tension between Irving and the Nets' ownership has actually been rising steadily for a couple of years now. Uh, I mean, we could sit here all day, man. I think we, should, we probably could go through the timeline of all the reports since I first came into Brooklyn. Uh, but the greatest lesson I could share with you that I learned from signing in Brooklyn for free agency is I wish I would have got to know the people that were behind the organization. Uh Apparently, this is because they know that they have all the leverage right now. Talks haven't really begun yet, but the Nets know that Irving will need their help via sign and trade to relocate to any other teams he likes in the offseason. That's probably why they're feeling pretty secure and aren't budging at all. I mean, it's not like Kyrie has a lot of good options available, does he? Yup. Amongst the teams around with cap space, there's not a single contender in the mix. What's more, even if these teams could create create cap space, they don't really have the kind of max money Irving is seeking. So, which teams have the potential to take Kyrie next summer? Let's see. We have the Spurs, Rockets, Magic, Pistons, Hornets, Pacers, and Thunders. Seems like a good list at first glance, doesn't it? But here's where things get a little complicated. These teams could possibly take a step forward toward the play-in, but there isn't a single contender in the mix. In fact, things aren't going to be smooth in terms of a transition at all. If Kyrie wants out of Brooklyn to get to the Lakers or some other team, it will have to come through an off-season sign and trade. Now, that's not going to happen unless Irving works with the Nets to make it happen, will it? Looks like no matter what choice he makes, he has to work on his relationship with the Nets. Cooperation is really the only way out of this. So what do you think will end up happening? Well, honestly, looks like ultimately Kyrie will re-sign in Brooklyn if this run of strong play continues into the playoffs. This is a big shame isn't it? After all, despite the tension, Irving fits in really well on the court with the Nets, especially Kevin Durant. In fact, he also likes being in Brooklyn. Technically, this should be a fit that could work great for everyone. Even if things don't work out, there are some more questions to think about when it comes to Kyrie's career. That's right, I think the most crucial part of his new contract will have to be the number of years he gets contracted for. Let's see, is there any team out there that would be willing to lock him down for for four fully guaranteed years? I'm not so sure, guys. In fact, I think there's hardly any team out there which would want him for more than a couple of years. At the very least, not any team that Kyrie actually wants to play with. What do you guys think? There are a bunch of reasons for this. As good as Irving is, I think there's just so much fresh talent coming in right now that teams are grasping for someone better, someone younger, someone with less hassle. It's such a shame. I, for one, really hope it works out with the Nets. It's such a great fit after all. That was all the latest news on what's been up with Kyrie Irving. See you in the next video.